So that was a mistake. So a couple of weeks ago, I said this. Basically with that in mind, I'm gonna stop promising a new video every Sunday. I'll do my best to get them out by then. But yeah, instead of apologizing every single week for not making that deadline, I'm just gonna do away with that expectation. Well, as it turns out, that was a colossal mistake. I spent the last month working on one video. Now you might be thinking, oh, well, this must have been a labor intensive project where you were trying to up your screenwriting and or production slash entertainment value, right? Nope, just a regular old script. Yeah, basically, I just caught a bad case of writer's block. Now, I always thought that writer's block was the state of not being able to write anything new. But according to the definition, writer's block isn't only measured by time gone by without writing. It's also measured by time gone by without productivity in the task. Basically, you can write something new every day. But if by the end of all that writing, you don't have a completed project, and this goes on for an extended period of time, then you're experiencing writer's block. And that's what happened to me. I basically wrote every single day for the past month. Okay, if I'm being honest, I did give up a few times, but it was never for an extended period of time like I usually do. If you've seen my other videos, you know if there's one thing you can say about Thief Badaki, it's that he's a quitter. It's unfortunately my defining trait and the reason I'm not where I want to be in life today. But despite that, if I had to guess, I would say that out of a 30 day month, I probably wrote for a good 22 to 25 of those days. And that's uncharacteristic for me. And I won't lie, like, I'm at least a little bit happy with myself for not throwing the baby out with the bathwater and letting the frustration of writer's block lead to me scrapping this whole video editing endeavor and returning to my not so healthy habits. But even after all this not quitting, I still only ended up with this meandering mess of half-baked ideas that I could never tie together into some cohesive and coherent concept or argument I mean, I started out wanting to write about a particular story, but then I decided to broaden that idea to encompass all stories in general. But then somewhere along the line, it took a turn and I was actually talking about reasoning slash rationale and why we as individuals either like or dislike particular stories. But then that turned into a discussion about hypocrisy. And that's where I really got stuck. I must have spent two weeks alone trying to make the script about hypocrisy work. I mean, look at this. 22 pages, 22 pages of writing and nothing to show for it. I mean, I'll usually write anywhere from seven to 10 pages about a concept and edit that down to four or five pages for the actual script. But 22, I essentially wrote five different scripts over the past month and none of them came to fruition. And of course, along the way, I thought to myself, maybe I should just write about something else. Maybe I should write about one of my other ideas, but I couldn't accept the possibility that I'd sunk all this time and effort into this script just to abandon it after a month. I mean, wouldn't that just be me quitting again? Isn't that precisely the character flaw I'm trying to overcome by doing all of this in the first place? And so I just go back and start trudging along again, writing something new every day. And this was the worst part, because you write something one day, and even though you're not ecstatic about it, you're at least satisfied, and you feel like you're mostly out of the woods. You just need to go back tomorrow, touch a few things up, edit a word here or there, and then boom, you will have your script and this entire ordeal will be over. And then the next day you go back and read what you wrote and you think to yourself, what kind of illiterate troglodyte wrote this garbage? Is this even English? Am I slow? Was I on drugs? How did I think that any of this was even remotely acceptable? And so I just go back and start trudging along again writing something new each day and the cycle would just continue and you want to know the worst part about all this remember how i said this all started because i wanted to write about a particular story well that's because i had just finished watching this tv show and i had some thoughts thoughts that i couldn't just get out of my head thoughts that invade your mind at 3 a.m after you just got up to go to the bathroom and won't let you go back to sleep because you can't focus on anything else and before you know it oh look the sun is coming up and i only got three hours of sleep thanks a lot brain i didn't even like this show to begin with you know those kinds of thoughts basically i needed to get these thoughts out of my head and so i thought to myself you know what why don't I just use this whole video editing thing to express these thoughts? I mean, basically all of my other videos started out with this exact same feeling of me desperately needing to express something. Sure, I'd meticulously developed a plan and a schedule for my next four to five videos, but this was literally my gut saying to me, yo dude, it's no big deal. You can do those videos later. You should talk about this right now while it's fresh in your mind. And so I said, you know what gut, you're right. 
I will talk about this now, while it's fresh in my mind. Well, after a month of dealing with the worst writer's block that I've personally ever experienced in my life, all I have to say to my gut is... Why the f*** you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my god, stop lying! I literally already made a video about trusting your gut only to have it lead you down a path of turmoil and despair. And I don't care what you call it. Instinct, gut feeling, intuition, whatever. This is something that we all experience and it's a phenomenon that's become so ingrained in our lives that we don't even really think about it consciously anymore. Having gut feelings or instincts are facts of life the same way that humans breathing oxygen or the Lord of the Rings being the greatest trilogy ever made are facts of life. You heard what I said. Phrases like trust your gut or follow your instincts are evidence that there's some inexplicable sensation that we all experience when having to make decisions. Well, what happens when you follow your instincts and it leads you down a treacherous path? What happens when trusting your gut destroys all the plans that you made to reach a particular goal for yourself? By virtue of the fact that you are a human being, I know that you, the person watching this, have experienced this. And so I'm asking you genuinely, what do you do? How are you supposed to feel? How do you react and respond to this? Like I said, I already made a video where where I literally had to stage a conversation with myself just to get past this feeling. In the video, I call this feeling my intuition, but like I said, call it whatever you want. And in the video, I tried to come to terms with my intuition deliberately sabotaging my plans. And I somehow managed to find a little bit of peace in the actual making of the video. But here I am again, going through that exact same experience and I am just as angry as I was back then, if not more so this time. But I don't wanna make a part two to that video because I've rewatched it a couple of times and let's just say that writing and performing dialogue isn't a particular strength of mine. But anyway, like I was saying, how do you respond to this feeling or this instinct constantly derailing you? Wouldn't you just teach yourself to ignore it? To effectively kill this instinct? Isn't that a reasonable response to have towards something that continuously destroys your plans? I mean, isn't that justified? Isn't that completely logical? And my answer to those questions is yes. It is justified. It is completely logical. And yet for some inexplicably annoying reason, even though my answer to those questions is yes, I just can't seem to ignore or kill that feeling. I tried several times over this past month to ignore it and to go back to my original plan, but that only led to me experiencing true writer's block, where I literally couldn't even string together two sentences about the topic I was writing about. I would just end up staring at a blank page for hours was on end. That road, the one that I chose, literally felt blocked to me. This feeling, this instinct slash intuition just kept pulling me back to this other road that was unbelievably frustrating to walk down. And again, I can't explain it, but for whatever reason, despite the frustration, I don't think this is a feeling I'm supposed to quote unquote kill. Do I think there's a reason for it? Yeah, I do. Do I know what it is? Not even a little bit. All I can say right now is that this entire experience has me thinking that I need to go back to the post every week mentality. Yeah, this whole I'll post whenever I have something done mentality just isn't working out. I think I definitely need to keep that Sunday deadline for myself. There's a type of catharsis that comes from finishing a project that helps relieve some of the built up stress that accumulates whenever you're dealing with something tedious. It's like you never enjoyed having homework, right? Or the process of doing it, but you did enjoy turning it in, that feeling of getting it done. There's a relief in the completion of a task. And personally, I experienced that relief whenever I finished a video. Each of these last four weeks, I thought to myself, this is the week I finished this script and finally post on Sunday again. And then Thursday would roll around and I still wouldn't even be finished writing. And I'd slowly realize that I wasn't going to meet my deadline again. And having that realization over and over definitely added to the overall frustration that I was experiencing. I think if I had kept the mentality of posting every Sunday, I would have pivoted in another direction and tried to find a way to express my frustration much earlier, instead of allowing it to build up and leak into other aspects of my life. And I've talked about this before, but I think expressing your negative emotions is a key step to getting past them, even if it's only momentarily. Unfortunately though, 
going back to this mentality means that I won't be able to always talk about the things that I want to talk about. I've mentioned it before, but I would rather talk about concepts like giving advice or truth and empathy rather than my own silly little brain problems. And I really wanted to post more videos about those topics. But the reality is that talking about my insignificant brain problems helps me to deal with them, which clears the way for me to talk about the bigger concepts that I actually want to talk about. The problem with this though, is that if I'm being honest, if I wasn't me or someone who was personally invested in my well-being, I probably wouldn't watch videos like this one. I mean, why would I want to watch someone else DIY their own therapy? Like, go see a therapist and then come back when you have something other than yourself to talk about, please and thank you. And I completely get that. I don't really watch other YouTubers who put out content like this, so why would I expect anybody else to watch my stuff? And so I have to preemptively apologize because I wish I could put out videos with more entertainment value, but I really just don't think I'm capable of that just yet. And if I forced it and shifted the focus of this channel to surface level discussion about current events, which has a lot more entertainment value, that would also go against this annoying gut feeling that dictates every aspect of my life. So I get it if you're not down to watch this absolute mess of a human being try to figure things out. But let's be real, I average like 10 views per video and I know at least two of those are me re-watching to look for mistakes and the other eight are probably my mom and my sister re-watching on different devices trying to get me to double digits. So this realistically isn't affecting anybody negatively. Thanks mom. But also, don't listen to anything I say. I've ended the last like five videos by saying what I'm gonna try and do with this channel and I've done precisely none of those things. So if you're a betting person, it's probably in your best interest to bet against me doing what I say I'm gonna do. But yeah, in any case, the moral of this entire story is that I'm just gonna try and post every week again. Oh, and also listen to your instincts or don't. I can't tell you what to do. I think they're there to help you but it's also not always easy to do what they say because a lot of times they're just gonna lead you down this tumultuous path of treachery and despair. So if you decide not to, I get it. But let me stop before I end up writing another script where I literally talk to myself. So yeah, anyway, that's gonna be it for this one. Honestly, it does feel good to just finish a script again. Like I am actually looking forward to shooting and editing this because I just haven't been able to do that in so long. Like I said, it's cathartic. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. If you did watch this, thank you so much for hearing me out and for allowing me to express myself to you. I know I just said it, but this really does help help me stay focused on what I need to do in order to fix my situation. So I truly, truly appreciate you watching. And with that said, I wish you all the very best going forward. Take care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Peace and be easy. Look at this. What, are you kidding me? Are you seeing this? Is it, can you see this? What's up, man? Careful, dude. Yeah, careful, man. There's no net up there, you can't. Are you looking for something? There's no food in here. <laughs> You're just gonna chill? You wanna watch the outro? All right, peace.